Mini, oi. You're on camera. Come, come here. Oh, you're going. There was a gap for you here. Cool, we're going that side. Anyway. What is up, everyone? Fish Shop Matt here. So, been sat here this evening. I've had a busy day, not doing anything with content, but just getting my studio, my little mini studio upstairs ready. I've taken delivery of some cabinets to go up there. Got to pick up the tanks in a few days. I've been, uh, it's just been madness. Still got a lot of work to do up there, but it's good. It's getting there. But I've been sat down here thinking my next things. I'm always sort of thinking of what I want to do and what I want to change. And I've got a couple of little empty tanks in the front room that aren't doing anything at the moment. The fish have been moved out into the other tanks. And I'm like, what can I do with them? And I thought, you know what, a little experiment would be quite cool. So in all of my tanks downstairs, well, in the house actually, all of my tanks, I use plant food. So I use liquid plant food. Now I use NT Labs uh, Plant Boost and Liquid CO2 Boost, I think they're called. Yeah, anyway. One's a, one's a plant fertiliser, so like minerals, elements, that sort of thing. Uh, the other one is a liquid carbon source. So both of them together work an absolute treat in aquariums. And I dose that pretty much to every aquarium pretty much every day. Yeah, there's going to be days that I get home late from the shop and I forget, but the majority of them get it every day. Now I find that this works really, really well. I've used NT Labs plant foods for quite some time now. You know, it's, it's just an easy one. They've got squirty bottles on the top, squirty bottles on the top, squirty heads. So it just makes dosing easy. So I know that like, uh, for instance, like if my aquarium is 250 litres, it's one dose per 25 litres. So it's like 10 squirts. So it's really simple that I can run around my house. I say run, walk around my house, 10 squirts in this one, five squirts in that one, one squirt in that one, a little mini squirt for the bowl. Um, and it's perfect because it just means it's so quick for me to dose. Now, like I said, I've been using it for years, but I have never done it where I've had like one tank that I use fertilizer on, the other tank that I don't. And it might be the case that like, even if I do that, even if you might have cichlids in one tank and tetras in another and you don't dose a cichlid tank and do dose, anyway, I'm waffling. But I've never done it where there's two tanks, very similar, that you dose one and not the other. So I thought it'd be quite a cool experiment. One light unit over the top of the two tanks, so the light unit's the same. Take the plants out so that, uh, like, I'm thinking that if I buy a plant, I would split the plant in half. Half goes in one tank, half goes in the other. I, you know, that's the fairest way of doing it, I think. And then I will dose plant fertilizer and liquid CO2 in one tank. So it will be, yeah, plant boost and CO2 liquid in one tank, and then nothing in the other one. There will be, literally, it will be light filter, that's it, and light filter on the other one. So I think it could be quite a cool experiment. But anyway, I'm waffling because it's late at night and I should really be going to bed. But had this thought, wanted to jump on it, wanted to get it down on camera so that I can start this video. Anyway, like I say, enough waffling. Tomorrow, let's start this because it is, I don't even know actually, midnight? Who knows? But let's start this tomorrow. Let's get these tanks done. Two tanks, scaped, mirror escape. So we're going to go wood, rock something i'll have a look at what's at the shop um get them sort of so that they're nearly identical and uh yeah let's do a little experiment i, th I think this could be cool a little bit different something different for the channel um i'll see you in the morning let's let's go to bed and i'll escape the tanks in the morning <sighs> thanks that's great thanks lovely yeah great that's brilliant well done now the dog's away, I think. Is that, I don't know if that's far enough back. We'll go with that. So where was I? Simple 25 litre glass boxes, nothing too exciting. Plant light over the top, taking the lids off, little internal filter in the back. We're gonna dose one with plant food, one without. Simple sand substrate, bit of twigs, bit of rock, job done. Um, and then the same plants in each one. So what I'm probably gonna do is like, split the pots so that some will end up in there and some will end up in there. And let's see how much of a difference plant food makes to a planted aquarium. I'm sure it's gonna be a lot, but I'm just interested, you know, you either use it or you don't. So you never quite have the same thing next to each other to see how different it is. Uh, and I think that's it. So we're gonna quickly scape and that's gonna be it. I don't know how, 
The only problem I've got is I'm going to forget which tank has got the plant food in it. If I go left to right, in theory, put the plant food on that one. Oh, I tell you what, I had a sticker. Hang on a minute, I'm going to go and grab. I'm sure I had an NT Lab sticker, because I use NT Labs fertilizers. I'm sure I had an NT Lab sticker somewhere. I'll stick it on the tank. Right, two seconds, I'll be back. Right, found it. So, if I stick that, I don't know where I got this from, to be fair. I think it was when I went to NT Labs office. I think I saw them and I was like, can I have a couple of them? Oh, do I want it at the top or the bottom? Oh, yeah, I think there. It's a big sticker for a small tank, but at least this way, even if I take it off for final shots, at least this way I'll remember which tank has got the fertilizer in and which tank hasn't. There we go, job done. Right, now, on with the scaping. Let's get some sand in there, a few rocks, a few wood, a few wood, a few bits of wood, and then we'll uh, crack on and get the plants in there. Substrate-wise, we are going just for some simple orange, orange? Yeah, orange sand. Substrate's in, so that'll be enough substrate to keep the uh, plants happy. That'll be absolutely fine. Then what we've got, we have got, sorry for my head coming into shot there. Hello. Um, we've got some tallow wood. Ugh. Bits of that. So my thought is to have that coming out from the corners, again, to mirror the image. And then I've got a box of dragonstone left over from a previous thing. I think that was actually the NT Lab scape that I'd done. I think quite a while ago now, um, when I went up to their office. So that's just the leftover bits from that. Yeah, so all I'm gonna do, as you can sort of see there, is mold this putty around the bottom of the branches to create a big ball down the bottom and then I can put my rock work to disguise it. All right, there we go. So we've got it all puttied up. I've actually put a zip tie around it as well just to hold them together as a little bundle. Just made life a little bit easier when it came to uh, putting the putty on. So one of them, Will sit in this tank. Now I will need rocks and stuff to prop it up in a second and one of them will sit in this tank uh, like so. Job done. Move that filter over a little bit. They don't need a lot of propping up I don't think. Just a little bit of pagoda stone. It's not even pagoda stone it's uh, dragon stone. But yeah once we've got that built up around there that's ideal. That's how we want it. This suction cup, because these suction cups are dry, they don't want to stick for the minute, which is quite irritating. Once I've got water in it, it'll be okay, but uh, it might have been because I was trying to stick it to a sticker. That's possibly the problem. Right, cool. So, both bits of wood in, looking good. Right, let's get some rock in around the bottom of it to actually hold it up now. Now what I'm going to be using is dragonstone, so it's that sort of holy rock, like this. So we're just going to be using a few pieces of that to give us a bit of structure around these bits of wood. So even though we're working with natural products, I'm fairly happy on how closely mirrored they are. It looks quite good. The wood's obviously always gonna be a little bit different because there's no way you're gonna get the wood to look the same unless I used like resin or plastic. We might end up putting a few more bits of dragonstone in there once we're done because like sort of around the back and around here, you might find we just want a few bits of dragonstone to make those plants pop. But really, I'm gonna spray everything down now, get it all damp, then commence the planting. The sand is sprayed down, the wood is all wet, everything's damp, so we can start commence planting. So we've got loads of different potted plants. We've got, well, I say loads. We've got two or three potted plants. We've got two or three in vitro plants. And we're just going to go for a difference. Now, what I'm going to do is, like, with this pot here, I'm going to split this in half so that half of it goes in one tank and half of it goes in the other. And I'll try and be as fair as I can be um, and put as many stems in one as the other but that's the plan and the same with the in vitros where I've got a big pot let me just grab one so I can show you so where I've got a pot with like Maria Filam in it I'm literally going to divide that down the center plant half and half so that the plants are coming out of the same pots in each tank so uh, 
Well, you don't need to see the planting. Let's go through it and plant it up quickly. I'll talk about the plant species later on once they're planted. <laughs> I don't think I need to go any heavier on planting than that. That's a really, oh, just kicking stuff. But it's a really simple amount of plants. So you've got, uh, oh, hang on, let me take it off the tripod and then you can actually see. In the back, sort of mirrored side to side here, you've got Pagostamon. I think it's either Erectus or Octopus or one of them. Um, I'll put all the names down in the comments. No, I won't. I'll put it in the description, not in the comments. Um, but yeah, so you've got that there. You've got a Myriophyllum in the back here, which I think its common name is like a parrot's feather. You've got a dwarf Lobelia in the corner. And like I say, this is mirrored in this tank. So all I've done was the pots that I had of both plants, I've split in half, roughly weighed them, and then mixed them into the two tanks. We've got Petchy Pink down in this corner. You can't really see it because it sort of blends in with the sand quite well at the moment. Um, but yeah, Petchy Pink down there. And then this is Helianthium... Bolivianum, something like that anyway. Again, plant names will be down in the uh, description. Oh, oh, and a little crypt that I put. That was a little potted crypt that I had. So yeah, there was two sprigs of that. So I've put that in there. Roma, have you come to check out what's going on? What are you doing? Roma's here, are you check in. Okay, but yeah, that's it. Plants are in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get them filled now. Uh, get that done, get the filters running, and then you'll see this. Well, let's do, what should we do, every few days? We'll do an update every few days. The plant food goes in daily. It's gonna be one squirt of each in this tank, nothing in this tank, and let's see where we get to. So uh, yeah, let's get them filled, and then you'll see them in a few days time. are back. So it's been, what's it been? Week and a half? Nearly two weeks maybe? So yeah, around that mark. So there's not massive amounts of growth as, you know, as with any aquarium at that stage, it's going to be quite slow starting. But there's definitely some differences in the aquariums. I haven't water changed them, I haven't algae them, I haven't, other than topping up evaporation, that is all I've done. And as you would expect, they've pretty much evaporated at the same rate. Um, so yeah, just been topping them up every now and again. Obviously this one on the left that I stuck the sticker to, that is the one we've been dosing our plant food in. So like I say, we've done, what's the day today? I haven't done it today actually. So we've got plant boost. We have one of them. And we've got liquid CO2 boost. And we have one of them. Yeah, that's it, I haven't done it today. And that's it. That's all I've done for the last week and a half. And there's definitely some differences. I'd say, well, actually, let's take it off the tripod and I can show you closer because then I can actually walk you through it. Let's get them out of the way. And then I can uh, show you through what's actually changed in the uh, week and a half, two weeks that we've had them going. Both tanks have done fairly well. You know, nothing's really melted massively. We have had a little bit of melt on the Pagostum on Erectus, which I'll be honest, is a plant that I always suffer with, to be fair. I've never been very good at growing it. But this one in the non-fertilised tank, still melting a little bit, got a couple of good stems. Um, whereas the one in the fertilised tank has got some really good new little stems coming to it. So I'm hopeful. I think they'll both pull through. I just think this one's got more chance and more f new shoots coming off of it. So yeah, I'm hopeful that they're going to do both okay. But we'll see. We might need to replace that one and try something different in there. But I'll keep you informed in the next video anyway. At the back, we've got the Maria Film, so you can see that sort of green chunk of plant back there. Uh, again, in the non-fertilised tank, it's not done a great deal. It's got a few little shoots coming off the top that you can sort of see at the back there. Whereas the one in the fertilised tank, as you would expect with having a fertilised tank, he's got loads of new growth right at the top, and there's some really big leaves, or I say big, big for the in vitro pots that we've got um, coming through. Got the little crypt that's in amongst the wood there. Again, the one in the fertilised tank's got some new little shoots coming off of it. The one in the non-fertilised tank, not doing a great deal. Um, what else have we got in here? Oh, the Lobelia. So yeah, Lobelias both look the same, to be honest. You've got the Lobelia back there and the Lobelia in this one. They both look fairly similar. Maybe the one in the fertilised tank looks a bit bushier, maybe. Yeah, possibly, but yeah, they're, they're quite similar in both of them. 
Um, Crypticorn pink petchy thing. Um, again, they're quite small. They're only quite young, so there's not a great deal of difference between the two, but with how the other plants are doing in the fertilised tank compared to the non-fertilised, I think you'll see a boom in that once it starts sending its roots down and sort of getting that life into it. I'd say that the Helianthium has sort of taken off a little bit more, so there's not many new leaves in here. All the leaves are fairly similar to how they went in. Um, and it did, both of them had a little touch of melt when they went in, but whereas this one has come back really strong and has got a lot of new leaves and a lot of new sort of shoots coming from the middle and has filled out a lot more, these ones you can see they're still the big leaves that I put in there and there's none of that new growth really. So. But as you would expect, the fertilised tank is doing better than the non-fertilised tank. At the moment you can't see that massive amount of growth, but I think over the next few weeks we are going to see it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave this video here because otherwise it's going to be like half an hour long and like I said in earlier, hang on, let me uh, let me put you back on the tripod. But yeah, I think it's worked out quite well. I'm going to keep dosing these plant foods into this one, nothing into that one. I'll probably give them a water change, maybe get a few fish or some shrimps in there over the next couple of weeks. And then the next time you see them, hopefully, they'll be a bit more grown in. And we'll be able to see a stark difference in, you know, coloration, growth rates and things like that. I think it'll be quite cool to have those two tanks together. Like I said earlier in the video, I always use these plant foods in all of my tanks. And I know how it works on those tanks. It's just when you've got two tanks identical next to each other that you can actually see the stark difference in, you know, what are these? They're, they're fairly cheap for what they are. I can't remember how much these retail for, but they're not expensive. And just for that... To be able to put a squirt of that and squirt of that in every day, it just helps your plants. And you know, what's a plant? Five, six pounds sometimes. So if you can spend five, six pounds on a bottle of um, plant fertilizer and grow more plants, it's more cost effective for you. It's going to be better. You can take trimmings off them. You can plant them in other tanks. Yeah, so much, so much better to be able to do that. Um, like, I'll be honest, like the cuttings from my XL live bearer tank at the moment, that would probably fill one of these tanks quite happily. Um, I might actually take some limnophila. If we don't do well with the Pogostamon, I'll take some limnophila out of the uh, XL live bearer tank and maybe chuck that in there. But anyway, I'm waffling now. But yeah, we'll see you in, I don't know, you'll probably see these tanks in maybe a month. I'll set a reminder on my phone to, uh, to uh, keep updating them and to keep videoing them over the next month so that you guys can see what's happened with them. And then, yeah, next video you see will be in a month's time when we'll see what's happening in these two tanks. So, uh, well, until the next one, I'll see you then.